Hey guys, welcome back to another Drassel Live. Um, so today we actually got the tier list up, so I'm gonna do this one a bit differently. So I got um, my friends Temerity and uh, Professorus. Is that actually how you pronounce your yeah. name? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. Well, everyone just calls you Prof. So um, to discuss the tier list, which they you know helped uh, create. And uh, yeah, let's go through them. So today we're just gonna talk about the top two tiers. Um, because, well, I don't want to make this, like, a two-hour thing, three-hour thing. Like, wow, if we, like, actually went through, like, the whole tier list, like, Dino by Dino, it's probably going to take, like, four or five hours. So, anyways, um, we're just going to do these. And, uh, Prof actually, uh, did his own breakdown on his channel as well, so you can check that out. I'll link it in the description. And, anyways, uh, let's, let's get into this then. So, uh, 1.9, huge meta changes, <laughs> um, as, as, you know, uh, pretty obvious, right? Um, it might be one of, the, like, the biggest meta changes, like, uh, actually, I don't know, like, the whole bleed revamp patch, I don't know, but, it, it, you know, a lot of stuff changed, so, uh, let's go over them, so let's start with the S plus tier, so we created a new tier, S plus, just because there are a few dinos that are, like, slightly just so much better <laughs> than the others, so we're gonna talk about those first, so, uh, in S plus tier, we have three dinos, we got, uh, Ardentis Maxima, or however you call it, Gemini Titan, and Interruptor Gen 2, so, which one shall we, uh, discuss first? Let's talk about, uh, Ardentis Maxima first, so, um, anyone has any thoughts on this, this thing, why we threw it up here? Well, it's, it's a monster, monster. <laughs> right? So... Just a quick summary of stats for those who don't know, 5.4k HP, 1.3k damage, 30% crit, 108 speed, 15% armor, D-cell strike, D-cell impact, <laughs> definite rampage, instant invincibility, and immunity for some reason. Well, not for some reason, but, you know, just the whole move set plus the stats, like, how? Oh, this thing is absolutely busted. <laughs> yeah, okay, so last patch, it was already really, really good, Like, but it was more of a specialized dino, it was only really good for, like, a... a and speedsters, but it beat almost all of them. Actually, all of them, I think, one on one. one, one. Mm -hmm. But now Ludia just buffed it uh, to Oblivion, and it beats everything 1v1, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> There's very, very few exceptions, to be honest. Uh, like, it's just... And it, the sad thing is that it only needs to rely on two moves, and it's insane stats to, to do that. It's mm -hmm. never going to be slower than the opponent, because it's immune, and it decels, like, obviously, unless the opponent uh, is also immune. But mm -hmm. it's always got a speed advantage on top of those crazy stats. Like, its attack is super high for a tank. Its HP is super high for a tank. Mm. Well, yeah. well, yeah, I guess. It's, like, in the, uh, it's, it's, it's normal the, for a tank. It's, it's on, like, the, the higher half for sure, but it's, like, on the lower yeah. half of the higher yeah. half, I guess. But it's just, like, the, the combo of immunity and armor is something that's only seen in Ankylocodon, I think. Mm -hmm. But that obviously completely pales compared to our dentist <laughs> that ways and then to top it off the the 30 percent crit will just get you out of situations where even if the opponent might have had a chance of beating you 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 snatch that away from them <laughs> right so oh my that goodness this thing. 1.3k damage uh 1.5 multiplier and a two times multiplier that that you know that's definite right oh my goodness yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Got like any, yeah uh -huh. we have yeah Due um, to the fact that we've got uh, an impact and a rampage, like it's always going to have boosted attack. Like it's either going to be what is it, one thousand nine hundred and fifty? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and two thousand six hundred. Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, yeah. Any thoughts, Tim? Yeah. And go on what he said. It's just you can throw this thing into any situation and it just prevailed and set up thor yeah so that's that's uh that that's maxima i mean it's basically it it's pre it's a pretty straightforward dino um like what it does is pretty simple it just obliterates everything right <laughs> so um yeah nothing else much to touch on here let's move on to it's it's i guess other similar counterpart that people always try to compare uh, the other one, um, Gemini Titan. Gemini Titan is also in this realm as well. 6,000 HP, 1.4k base damage, 110 speed, 5% crit, no armor, and Null Strike, Decel Rampage, what else? Instant Distraction, Long Protection, 
And it got immunity in this patch. It got immunity. Wow. I honestly don't know what they were thinking with this one. Like, where does he... Like, where does the immunity even come from, man? Like, Kula board doesn't have it. Um, Kula Gen 2, Rambo doesn't have it. Like, what? Why? <laughs> yeah. it, it's like they no just words. randomly slap, like, this passive on just to make it so much better, <laughs> right? No, it's like Ludia but... said that they undervalued immunity, but then they mm -hmm. went ahead and, like, completely overvalued it. Like, nah, come on, guys. <laughs> right. But I, I also kind of agree of giving it immunity in, in, a, in a way because it is one of the hardest creatures to make in a game. It should be one of the best creatures in the game. So oh, the yeah, fact... Sure. Yeah, giving, giving it immunity gives it that edge, even if it lost a little bit of attack and a little bit of uh, HP. It at least allows it to be what it should be in this game. Well, well I, I do agree with that. I think Gemini Titan should definitely be one of the top dogs in the game. It's just, um, with the immunity, there's almost nothing to, like, really set it apart from Maxima. Like, uh, if it has, if it would have just, like, higher stats than it currently has, which are already ridiculous, then you'd at least have one tank that's immune and one tank that is just completely insane stat-wise, which we had before, but... I, I do I do understand that they wanted to make it even better because of how hard it is to make. That's definitely a good point. Yeah, but at the least problem, like something to differentiate them a bit more. The difference between Maxima and Gemini is Gemini doesn't have the continuous high damage output that Maxima does. Yeah, that's um, true. it has that turn one output, and with 110 speed, it outspeeds the Thor. It can come into a Thor, um, out uh, revenge kill it against it. Um, it can come into a Tenrak and stuff like that um so having that slight speed advantage does give it an edge when um coming into certain situations yeah that's definitely true but while it, while it might not have as much power as maxima it has this it does have more survivability because you can just keep alternating d cell rampage and instant distraction if you want for essentially like a free turn and then constant uh, rampages Mm -hmm. Like you've obviously got the the longer shield if you're facing stuff like Erlodom, but I mean it's not like Maximum loses to that anyway. It's, these guys are so far above anything else; it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Like um, them both being immune is just it takes away one of the only counters to super high HP dinos and bleed. It's like you're almost forced to rend or just smack away at them with this super high attack. It's crazy. And and like if you could like set up a wrench kill with freaking long protection, dude. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's, G it's GG. <laughs> yeah, I guess like my my point from earlier is just that, um, yeah, sure, it 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 could be you know really good because of how hard it's uh it is to get. But like just my my only point was immunity just came out of nowhere. Like none of its components had it. <laughs> like maybe if like they gave one of its components immunity or something it would make a bit more sense to add it like I, i'm fine with buffing gemini and all but like just immunity no clue where it came from <laughs> anyways moving on to our last uh, by the way we're not doing this in like any sort of order you know just well i guess well, you can con yeah you can consider these first three to be the top three in order yeah yeah right but then afterwards it's not really in order mm -hmm. so last one we got to talk about is the new interruptor gen 2 <laughs> So, so awesome. <laughs> oh my goodness! Like, uh, like, um, today is the um, uh, the the, the legendary and epic hybrid tournament, and this thing is just absolutely dominating in there. It's like it's not even close. It's obliterating everything. <laughs> so, um, quickly, um, moves and stats: three point nine k HP, one point five k damage, one twenty eight speed, twenty percent crit, cautious strike, which is absolutely broken, mutual fury, definite rampage, evasive stance, immune to distraction, and immune to stuns for some reason. <laughs> So, Indoraptor Gen 2. <laughs> what do y'all think? Um, well, yeah. You go ahead. <laughs> well, Indoraptor Gen 2 is probably... It is the strongest speedster in the game. Not only does it have the capability with boost to outspeed dinos that slow it with Cautious Strike, but it also has the capability of outspeeding anything faster in it and being able to finish it off with definite rampage. It, it essentially is probably one of, if not the best revenge killer in the game, 
with Conscious Strike, you get the dodge, you get that speed, um, ready for uh, the definite rampage that really can't be stopped. Um, that combined with the 20% crit, um, fairly high damage output, decent health. Uh, this thing is just overall a really good, uh, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so basically you can say that anything, I'm pretty sure it's a general rule that anything faster than Indo Gen 2 is an automatic loss to it simply due to the combo of Mutual Fury and Definite Rampage, since mm -hmm. after Mutual Fury goes, like, you won't be buffing their attack if they're faster than you, and then you outspeed them, and then you one-shot everything. Because anything faster than you doesn't have 4,500 HP, which is <laughs> right. as much damage as Definite Rampage do. So that's obviously huge. And mm -hmm. then obviously, there's if uh, you, you can use that combo as well with anything that's armored, things like Trico and, uh, and Dio come to mind, since they also have 4,500 HP, but die to a, an attack boost to Definite Rampage, and don't have the highest turn one. Like, Dio does more damage to Indo than Trico in that scenario, because it can slow uh, Ferocious, but uh, it still ends up losing. It's Like, this thing is the matchup king. Like, it, you'll mm -hmm. almost need a combo of dinos to take it out. Yeah, and, and also uh, correct me if I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, but like if you get like a a a a, a, a revenge kill with cautious strike, and like an like a really fast dino with speed up comes out, like an Earl Dom, you could then use mutual fury. That stacks, right? So you should still be yep, faster. Yeah, the so yeah, you the st stack. you're still faster than an Earl Dom, and definitely yeah. rampage. Yeah. That you know cloaks whatever, right? <laughs> and it's dead. Yeah. There's nothing they can do. Yeah. <laughs> like even other speedsters with speed ups, if you get you know a cautious strike in before or even afterwards, like you could still stack those on 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 turn two. Like what the heck, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like Erlodom's only chance is to go for the rampage and hope it crits. Hope it crits, That's right? It. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and then mm -hmm. not to mention, you can anything that doesn't have superiority strike or cleansing, that cautious strike. 50 what is it 50 percent of the time it's gonna reduce it to basically nothing because mm -hmm. it, it has to 50 percent distract plus the chance to dodge so that's yep. another 33 percent chance of reduction yeah i think that's like 16 percent if i correct me if i'm wrong of the of the original damage that's hilarious this thing <laughs> I don't know like, what they were thinking. This, this is the crazy thing about Indogen 2. Like, either one of the combo of Mutual Fury and Definite Rampage or just Cautious Strike itself is kind of busted, but having both options available <laughs> right. is... Like, I think personally that Cautious Strike should deal, like, half damage or 0.75 damage. Like, it's kind of in the name, Cautious. Like, mm -hmm. I think with all those effects, it would do less than a normal strike. But uh, who knows what they'll do. But right now, it's it's easily, easily nah. the best legendary in the game. Mm -hmm. And the best purely offensive dino in the game. Like, uh, I saw a post on Reddit um, a few days ago, like, about how, like, someone was like, oh, in Indo Gen 2 isn't actually better than Indo Gen 1. What? Are you kidding me, my dude? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's not even close. Like, it's, it, like, Indo Gen 2 isn't, like, oh, it's just, like, a tier higher. It's two full tiers higher, like... Indo's got, you know, much better this patch, obviously, you know, can't deny that. But, like, what? Cautious Strike, Mutual Fury, Definite, like, everything about this thing is like an upgrade from that. That no, was, was one like, of the most preposterous things I've ever seen on Reddit. That's just someone who, who didn't really, like, read into, like, the full potential of Indo's moveset, but mm -hmm. just saw, like, Mutual Fury, oh, you raised the opponent's attack, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. And it has, it has a continuous cleansing so it's not like it's affected by bleed either yeah. and being slower than probably the only bleeder it's going to be up again allows it to not get blood that's a very good point mutual fury and cautious strike essentially make it immune to bleed as well like mm -hmm. you're never going to take bleed damage yeah. unless you're like someone thing like a terabex is swapping wounds you but yeah yeah and, and you're, fast, you're mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, you're like you're slower than Olicospix, you're slower than Spinotasuchus, you, you cleanse that bleed away, you're faster next turn. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. This thing is incredible. <laughs> yeah. And like the, the point about like Mutual Fury, you almost, like the opponent almost never takes advantage of that. 
you're always yeah. like going to use it in a like must win situation next turn. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, there we go. <laughs> the new S plus tier with just absolutely disgusting Tynos. Um, those three put in there. So, anyways, uh, let's go down to S tier. Which, by the way, everything in S tier is still really, really good. It's not like um. You know, it's because they're not as plus, they're not like the best or whatever. They're still all really good. So let's get into these. Let's start with one of the, I guess I would say is probably a bit underwhelming in the S tier. Uh, let's start with Carnotarchus. Um, Carnotarchus is still really, really extremely good. Um, so we got 3.9k in HP, 1.1k in damage, 110 speed, 5% crit, 20% armor. We got security strike, long protection, precise rampage, instant distraction. And greater red encounter. <laughs> so, Carnotarchus. Wow. <laughs> so, um, this thing, like, it, it, if you just looked at its stats, it looks pretty underwhelming, right? But, like, the moveset just makes it, like, absolutely just so much better. Superiority Strike, obviously one of the best basic moves. Well, I would say it's it's more of, like, a tier 2 basic move now. Now that um, Cautious Strike and Superior Vulnerability is out. But still really, really good, right? Um, long protection, that's great, especially with its relatively low health. But then again, it still has like 20% armor. So like 20% armor, long protection, another like shield. It makes that health doesn't look as bad, right? And like the speed, 110, it outspeeds all your, you know, 109s, 108s, 107s. Are there any like relevant 107s anymore? Um, I don't think so. Not that really comes to mind at the moment. And then... Uh, it, it has damage <laughs> even though the base damage is pretty you know it's underwhelming you got a rampage right and then you also got greater end encounter which you know your base damage doesn't matter here in this case yeah. and to pair it up with instant distraction like it's it's so good <laughs> so anyways uh you guys want to talk about it okay so um Karnatarkus definitely has a big has a good place in the meta it's just or like only because of that rend encounter um mm -hmm. it's super it's incredibly useful to combat the, the super high HP tanks, although it still doesn't really love to face them, if we're being honest, because well, no like, one it does can't come use on. its instant distraction combo against them, obviously, <laughs> for mm -hmm. uh, since they're immune. Right. And uh, yeah, so it really completely has to rely on um, its counter. And like, there also, there's also the fact that long protection is can be nulled by Gemini and be broken by Ardentus. Mm -hmm. So it's like its utility moves, like superiority obviously is, is useless against them as well since they're immune. Like this guy would be so much better against them if they weren't immune, but sadly they are. Mm -hmm. So um, like you, the, you're probably not going to win the 1v1 with them, but it's one of the few dinos that can reduce their HP by a significant amount. Yeah. I mean, it, this thing, as long as it survives two turns, that's like more than half of their HP down. Like it still has, um, despite... You know, uh, instant traction not being much, long protection not going to do much. I mean, a precise rampage. Well, maybe it probably yeah. just gets one hitted, but you know, precise rampage plus a counter or two counters, still, you know, it's, that's it, a decent it, it amount, right? It definitely whittles away at them. It's just, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. They're but just, like, again, that's yeah. not the only matchup it's ever going to face as well, right? It still does yeah. well against um, a, a lot of the other uh, uh, dinos that aren't um, Gemini and Ardon, so. I think it still earns its place over here. Although it is, no, it you know, it is, I would say it's probably one of the weaker S tiers, but still really good. Yeah. Yeah, one thing I would like to point out is long protection against Gemini is actually really good because it forces Gemini to do a low damage move um, while it does, because obviously you're going to do long protection. And if they do um, no turn one, which you're. Do you go faster? No, they go faster, so they can't even do no turn one. They would have to do the rampage turn one. You're not gonna be able to kill um Carno by turn two. So you're forced to do that no regardless. And that's when that precise rampage combined with the greater rending is gonna come key into play. It's gonna do a lot of damage to Gemini and it's gonna set yeah. up just about everything else in your team. Yeah, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. So, there we go. That's Carnotarchus. So, uh, next one we're going to talk about is Gripleth. So, we're going to talk about, like, the relatively higher HP dinos first, and then we'll move on to lower HP ones. So, Gripo somehow found its way back up to S tier. This thing is interesting. Like, 
Um, nothing really changed with Gripo. It's just that the meta is just slightly more favorable to it, right? And that was honestly enough to boost it up here. So 4,440 HP, uh, 1,000 damage, 106 speed, 5% crit, 20% armor, uh, DSS, immobilize, regen, long prot, and rend encounter, 25%. So, Gripo, folks. <laughs> I find Gripo just basically a better version of Karnatuckus in this meta. It has it has more HP with the same amount of armor. Um, it has that long protection, but what really sets it apart is the ability to gain twenty two hundred health back. That allows mm -hmm. it to survive more damage to be able to get that rending counter off um, again and again. Um, it it it's also nice against um, creatures that you don't want to leave. Like if you have an almost dead creature on the field and you don't want to like rampage or run or something like that you got that immobilized to be mm -hmm. able to keep it stuck in place um while it while it's it doesn't have the overall damage output that Karno does it does have the survivability and the utilities to be a better support style um creature mm -hmm. yeah definitely um, yeah, just the greater survivability combined with the fact that it relies on its friend encounter to do damage just overall over the course of the game leads to higher T uh, TDO than Carnotarchus, I think. Um, as you mentioned, uh, Immobilize is obviously super key in like setting up your own dinos. Like You can get an Immobilize off before you die and uh, then keep that dino locked in so you can set up without fear. Uh, immobilize obviously really helps with the with the cooldowns on mm -hmm. your relatively long cooldown uh, regen and lung protection. It's it's just better than Carnotarchus where it counts, but Carnotarchus is still r good enough that it manages to make S tier, I think. But yeah, yeah, the the five hundred HP increase is is really huge. Mm -hmm. Also, you know, um, speed is also something Carnotarchus has over um, Gripo for the most part. Yeah. So true. they're not like entirely similar, but. Um, obviously, you know, there are points where, uh, Gripolith actually scores over Carno. So, moving on, um, speaking of counter dinos, let's just go into Dio Raja over here. So, Dio Raja was, a lot of people could argue last patch was, um, the best dino in the game, although, you know, a lot of people doubted that as well, which is pretty hilarious, but, um, due to the meta changes, like, nothing really happened to Dio Raja, but the meta changes kind of put it down a peg right so base stats 4.5k hp 1000 1, damage 108 speed 5% crit 30% armor spirit strike instant distraction ferocious strike instant invincibility and precise shatter encounter with that 1k base so deal raja like the the biggest change to it honestly like is just the 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 new dinos right indo gen 2 screws with it R dot um, Maxima, right? They all just screw with it. Um, does Magna beat Dio right now? It depends on what move Magna goes for first, whether it's null yeah. distracting impact. Yeah, like the last That's patch, Dio just just straight up beat Magna, and Magna yeah. has a you know a better chance to beat Dio this patch now. So it's it's just a combination of all these like immune like because this patch like you know obviously immune. It got the biggest W over here, right? So everything that kind of struggles against a, a, a lot of immune dinos like the Araja, because, you know, instant distraction is such a godly move, but, you know, if you're immune, it does nothing, right? So that really just puts uh, the Araja down um, uh, quite a bit. So um, you guys' thoughts on this? Yeah. Um, like, Dio does lose to Indogen 2, but it is one of the dinos that can take us uh, take more hp out of indogen 2 than most others simply by superiority strike counter plus ferocious strike that's um, the bar we're dealing with right now it's not who's gonna yeah. beat indogen who's gonna <laughs> deal more damage to indogen 2 before it dies <laughs> exactly. that, that ranks it higher um it still obviously is fantastic against the speed like uh, stuff like uh, erlodom um, mm -hmm. uh, i think it's it's is forest forest isn't immune to decel is it it's immune to um, swap, swap yeah swap, swap yeah, prevention yeah. so it does pretty well against uh, forest um 
I believe. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah. Like, as we said, the, the, the matchup with Magna is a 50 50. However, wh- one thing we didn't mention is that it now uh, loses to Erlikospix, which mm-hmm. it beat before, which is another unfriendly meta trend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it also loses to Trico now. Am I. Does it? It, it lost to Trico before, but it, it, yeah, it, it, it was like a 60 40% chance to lose yeah. to Trico due to the speed the pure tie. damage that Trico had. Yeah. I thought it was um, like a speed tie situation, wasn't it? Like, whoever wins the speed tie wins this matchup. Uh, I think it's more of it's more of the damage because Dear Raja can gain um, speed advantage with uh, superiority. Um, but that it's that ne- rampage combined with the fact the fact that Dear Raja relies on its counter in order to deal damage against armored dinosaurs um, gives Trico that that huge advantage that it needs over it. Yeah. It's a it, super, super messy matchup. Either yeah, way. The, yeah. No one likes this matchup. Like, you have to calculate. <laughs> oh, when you use when to use instant traction. Like, it's and it's both ways. Who's gonna use instant traction on which turn? Like, I hate this matchup. Anyways, so let's not talk about that. Let's uh, move <laughs> on. Let, let, let's move on to Trico then. Huh? Oh, one sure. thing about the Araja. Mm-hmm, go ahead. I feel like the Araja right now is what Spix was last patch it either oh, yeah. wins its matchups or it severely hurts it yeah, um a lot, that's a lot of top tier a lot of top tier dinos that's gonna face it's gonna lose but it's also gonna just do that a good amount of damage because of that counter it has mm-hmm. it also uh beats proserath mimes right like that's a pretty big deal yeah all right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, moving on to Trico. Um, Trichosaurus again. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure nothing changed here as well. So, I mean, it, Trico is just such a solid, solid Dino. Like, like in all facets. Like, okay, maybe except for speed, I guess. But like in in every other department, four point five k HP. 1,680 damage. Oh my god, why did you have to like do that, man? 108 speed, 30% crit, 30% armor, defense shouting strike, instant traction, DSR, um, instant invincibility, and a medium counterattack because why not? <laughs> Trico. Wow. Um it, it's been it's been around this it's hovering it's it's been hovering around like the top ten but best dinos in the game for a while now, for quite a few patches. And, you know, it's not without reason, like it could take hits well, it could dish out a lot of damage, and that's basically all you need in this game. <laughs> Not die and kill other dinos, right? <laughs> and it does that very well. <laughs> so, anyways, Trico. Thoughts on Trico? Um, I love... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I, I love Trico in this meta right now. Um, It's one of the few dinos that can... <laughs> really just put a hurting on Gemini and uh, Maxima and all them. Mm-hmm. And then it it does have its obvious counters with Erlikospic and Thor and Tenrex, but it also is one of the few dinos that can just, like you said, dish damage out while taking it. So the fact that it can do both get, just gives it that advantage that not many dinos have um that and combined like you said before if there's one dino that i would invest in it would be trico because of the fact that how long has it been since it's been like out of the top five for dinos probably like four five six patches now mm-hmm. it's a well worth investment oh, sucks. <laughs> but uh yeah uh, yeah i mean it, it, it's freaking trico right <laughs> so uh, it, it is what it is. So, um, Prof, um, what do you want to say about Trico? Yeah, like, um, I completely agree that while it isn't 
quite as good as it might have been in past metas. Just the fact that it's one of the the few to really be able to go toe to toe with the uh, with the two immune sauropods just speaks volumes for how important it is to have on your team. Uh, it's like it's I find tri- a, a Trico to be one of those dinos that uh, is almost mandatory on every team. Like there's ve- you're barely ever going to see a a, t- a top hundred team without a Trichosaur. Um Just due to the utility it provides in a match. Uh, it does, I think, um, I did. I think it now uh, doesn't beat Magna, anymore, which is a bit uh, of a shame for it. But yeah, as again, as uh, we said again, like the the fact that it beats those two sauropods is just reason enough to keep it on your team, just to how over-centralizing they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, I mean, this game is basically... You need one dino to take out two of your opponent's dinos, and then you win, right? Yeah. And if you were to Overall. pick a dino to do that, this would be a really good choice, <laughs> right, to do that. So, yeah, um, uh, that's that's for Trico. So, um, moving on to the uh, next one we're going to talk about is actually a new dino, Smile Lammies. So, Smile Lammies got shafted, for those of you who didn't know. Um, it actually got a nerf... Um, as soon, whoa, the, oh, actually, the field guy hasn't actually um, got the new stats here, so. It's 3,990 HP, mm-hmm. 1,200 attack. Yeah, so. And the rest is. <laughs> like, if you guys are looking at the stats on the screen right now, which are not correct, but if it were still the stats, it would, it's unquestionably the best item in the game. Like, did it even lose any matchups at all <laughs> before it? it it uh-huh. had very select few matchups that lost, but I lo- you can rampage and run out and stuff like that. Like it was a support. Like if you look at its moves, it's a support style dino. That's what it is. But it had such high head to head um win ratio that it it could fit so many different roles perfectly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, so just uh, going over the moves um, after that. Uh, long defense strike, uh, deliberate prowl, precise pounce, impact and run, swap and stun, and <laughs> immune to stuns. So this thing is, wow. Like, w- like it, before this patch, no one could even fathom like having more than a 40% armor. And here we go. We got something with 50% armor with decent amount of HP. Um, still got Still got a shield to go with that as well. And it's and like long defense. It's not even like like the the regular one that it gives you like shield for one turn. This thing gives you like a, a shield for two turns. Wait one second. Isn't long defense strike just like short defense? Without <laughs> cooldown, yes. Yeah. Oh, with that, yeah, without a cooldown. So yeah. What the heck, right? And then <laughs> deliberate brow, precise pounds. It's it's so good. Um, any thoughts on this one, Prof? Um. So it got. Quite a bit worse with the nerf, but we don't really need to consider the nerf since no one had it by then, and I don't mm-hmm. think anyone still has it. <laughs> yeah, um, it has. In, it, it's a fantastic uh, like um, team synergy dino. Like you're going to be bringing it in with the swap and stun. You're going to be precise pouncing and impact and running back out, rinse and repeat, all the while taking very little damage due to the half da- like the half damage it takes from precise pounce and the half damage it takes from armor. Half damage it takes from shield, half damage it takes from deliberate from dodge. Like, come on, <laughs> you're always going to be like, depending on what the smile and Nemesis does, um, it's always going to be taking half damage, kind of. But mm-hmm. um, it doesn't have the best head-to-head matchups anymore. Like, it deals four thousand two hundred damage over two turns now, mm-hmm. which is still really good. But um, it one of the big things is it can't get through armor. Uh, it doesn't have any moves that go through armor, um, but it's like it has really interesting matchups since it, like it's a really solid counter to Thor, which is crazy for a Dino with fifty percent armor. You'd think Thor would win, but no, uh, it just pounces turn one, uh, reduces the attack, and Thor can't instant charge, and uh, because it's immune to stun, mm-hmm. and the impact and run has just enough damage to take out a full HP Thor. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, so that's hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> and it it just like the impact and run 
combined with all the swapping abilities we have in this game just makes for some really really interesting plays but we also have to keep in mind that this is all purely theoretical none of us have played with it with this guy yet uh we're just doing it based off its stats and it's going to be a while before any of us like really get this up to team level so <laughs> this is a purely right. theory crafted dino that we're talking about here yeah it might it, it might, might even change again before <laughs> anyone gets it <laughs> <That's> <laughs> who knows all right so there we go um Smilo, how do you, how do you, Smilo Nemis, Smilo Nemis, Smilo Nemis, I, I don't know, I don't know, <laughs> That's I mean, Smilo Nemis, yeah, whatever, Nemesis. yeah, moving on, um, so, uh, now we're gonna talk about the, the rest of the items, which are, you know, uh, slightly lower HP, so, uh, let's talk about the first one, Dracosera, Dracosera's been here for a while, <laughs> ever since it got the Swap and Shadow Rampage, which, got turned into swap swap and rampage now with a slight damage boost right and i would say i would definitely say uh Drake's Hero got worse this patch um just because of of all the new things that could screw with it right um you know not, not only the the all these damage boosts that folks got but also like a lot of the immunes immune to stuns makes it slightly harder to get out of its you know of a sticky situation but but still, overall, it does what it does really well, and it, it just lost a bit of that gravy, that that extra stuff, right? So its yeah. basic function is still completely intact for for the most part. So, um, Tim, um, want to talk about Drake's era? Sure. Um, with with the meta getting a lot more bulkier and slower, um, Draco, that's that's where Drake's era lost its main purpose mm -hmm. um because it, it, it's hard you have to wait longer to use it it's harder to use it um with all the shields going around stuff like that then you have Sila who can in, uh come in with a basically an instant distract and his immune stun um it can take that acute stun away or that rampage away uh it just it it lost quite a bit um of its power in this matchup, in this patch, and with uh, Gripalith getting an indirect buff, um, Tenrax kind of getting an indirect buff with its small buff again, it kind of lost, like I said, it lost its edge to be able to really do what it was supposed to do in the previous meta. Mm-hmm. Or move on, uh, Prof, DC? Yeah, yeah. Um, there's just, yeah, everything Tim said is on point. Uh, just like and there's a lot of dinos that can two shot it and aren't, or one shot it and aren't stopped by its uh, stun and regen combo or stun and rampage combo. Just like mm -hmm. we've got the sauropods, we've got Indo, Gen 2, there's the, the, the two chickens, there's the new the, the new chicken in Forest Rakos who just one shots it as well. Um, Trios is making a comeback and that's uh, kind of setup bait and Drake and a DC is kind of setup bait and uh, mm -hmm. for that guy and uh, right. Magna again can't be stuck. two shots it. It's um, things like it still does what it does super well, but everything else we've mentioned kind of makes dc less of an issue and i'm seeing more and more people actually drop it from their team now in favor of um dinos that are a bit more flexible and aren't as much of a punishment for when you use it mm -hmm. although you know people another, will still cry about it yeah. <laughs> another thing to point out is a lot of the dinos that synergize with it are kind of getting pushed out of the meta that is like rhinox yeah, that's very good and, point. yep the Rampage and Runners, yeah. Mm, the... Dalarak, Renex, all those folks. Yeah. 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 Huh, kind of Oh, sad. yeah, Yuta Sino can now also one-shot it. That's another big Oh, thing. yeah, the crit impact buff. Right. Uh, That's beautiful. beautiful. Mm-hmm. All right, moving on. Next one, old friend Erlodom, still sticking around. Got a pretty insane direct buff, but also an indirect nerf. So it's kind of in a funny situation over here on its own. So, 3,300 HP, 1.6k damage, 129 speed, 20 spent crit, minimal speed up, rampage, strike and run, cloak, and immunity. So, um, Prof, Erlodom. <laughs> yeah, 
I absolutely love this thing. It's uh-huh. always going to be on my team, I think. <laughs> I just took it off my uh, team. Well, no, oh. I'm about to. <laughs> I my, just my my team's anyway. just overall too frail. It's not that Earl Dump, yeah. Earl Dump's really good, yeah. but I just need yeah, more like as you said, um, stat buff uh, made it obviously better, but the meta became unfriendlier to it. Like the two sauropods, obviously again uh, make it sick of us saying it, but they beat it. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Trico and Dio are everywhere on you find them on every team they also beat it um but it's not even necessarily really a, a, like there's the new one forest rakos beats it as well it's just straight up because it's faster too. and it's in and it's uh it's instant rampage will go before Erlodon's cloak which is huge mm-hmm. um actually no it doesn't beat it because i forgot about the Erlodon you can HP speed up yeah <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> never mind although it's kind of risky though yeah, it is. Uh, crazy, but... If you speed up and for the superiority strike, then it still beats it. Yeah, you Arizona maybe have to cloak then yeah. and hope for a dodge. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. but it, it's it's a it's a super risky matchup. Um, but yeah, Erlodom isn't really meant to be taking things out uh, on one v one. It's meant to be coming out late game. Guys, don't lead with this thing. <laughs> um, it means to be coming out late game when everything else is uh, weakened up and deliver off a super uh, 3,200 uh, dam- turn one damage rampage. Mm-hmm. It can't be stopped by slows and distracts or stuns. It's the one of the ultimate ways of dealing with um, other nasty speedsters. Uh, like uh, straight up beats their Lico Spix now due to its HP buff. Right. Um, and damage. Spix has no, no chance the against da- it anymore. Damage didn't matter. Never mind. Yeah. Um, like it, it's one of the best answers to Magna. Magna can't two shot it. Early on, two shots it, or speeds it. Uh, it does well against Yo- against Yoshi. Uh, just with the minimal speed up followed by a rampage, unless Yoshi manages to dodge. But even then, it's a gnarly situation. Um, but yeah, it's it's an end game cleanup Dino, and it does that super super well. Mm-hmm. And, and also, like the the you know the the lower uh, tier Dinos that used to actually screw with it a lot like uh Rinex, Dialarag, they're you know they're 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 screwed now <laughs> basically i mean like it it was a full counter to Dialarag, i think actually. yeah um tim but yeah Earl Dom. um i personally don't use Earl Dom on my team there's mm-hmm. a reason for it but um it did get i think it did get slightly better in this meta being able to do over 50%, 50% or over 50% to both the sauropods. Um, being able to just, like Prof said before, being able to come in and do that rampage is absolutely crucial for it. Um, it, it does have that minimum speed up strike, so it can revenge kill if it needs to. In revenge kill, it can run if it needs to. That way it deals damage if it needs to run. Um, it's just it's it's a nice dino to have on your team in just about any situation. Even even as an opener, it can be bothersome because a lot of the openers it beats straight up. Where yes, you will probably lose it um come in the next dino, but it can set your team up for success in the beginning of the match. Um preferably it is a better end game dino. But I I think it got better this patch with that with really that damage buff. Mm-hmm. So um there you go, that's Earl Dom speaking of. Let's go to Erlico Spix now, the other unique Erlico Dino. So uh Erlico Spix. <laughs> it's same as it used to be, except it got immune to D cell. So its biggest enemy you know, which was slow, and now it can't be slowed. <laughs> so uh, the problem with it last patch was stuff like Tanadrex and Dialarac just straight out, you know, two-shot it, right? And, um, yeah, no, they just can't do that anymore. They can't slow it at all, and it's it's pretty insane now. <laughs> so, um, early good specs, Prof. Yeah, I use this on my team as well. Mm-hmm. It's just Same. a, it's a fantastic 
fantastic um, jack of all trades. Like it's got a move for every situation. It can counter revenge, or, like it can revenge kill. It can uh, counter sweep with uh, minimal speed up. It can destroy things that can't um, cleanse distraction, like Trico, with the combo of of uh, debilitating distraction and lethal wound. Um, it stuff like Thor as well. It's uh, like the seventy five percent damage reduction is crucial for dealing with chompers that can't uh, cleanse distraction. And um, while it, it now does lo lose to Erlodom, as said before, it generally will have mm -hmm. more utility in a match than it, simply due to the, the vast array of uh, options it has at its disposal. Right. It'll always do something. And, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Even if it can't do any of that, uh, Jazz, it could still do a lot of damage. <laughs> that's, yeah, exactly. you know, 3,000 with the Rampage and then a speed up, that's still 4.5k damage in, you know, two uh, two rounds. You know, it's biggest enemy immune, but still, it could deal a decent amount of damage before it dies, right? So, Tim. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's just one more thing I wanted to say. Mm -hmm. Like um, the lethal wound, we've got a lot of swap and stunners now, and swap and stun combined with uh, lethal wound is a death sentence on basically any dino that isn't immune. Like mm -hmm. Monstegotops, uh, uh, Forest Rafa, um, Smilo Nemesis, all these guys combined with uh, lethal wound is uh, super super scary. <laughs> yeah, Tim. Before we move on, any thoughts on this thing? I think. Spix kind of lost some of its edge, even though it gained the um the immunity to deceleration. Said, yep. Uh, it it lost a lot of its edge with more dinos being able to counter it. It used to be um a double-edged sword where it either one or it does massive damage, but now it can either straight up lose to Utah Seno. <laughs> Um, all of them, like you said before, but mm -hmm. other other than that, it, it is a jack of all trades. It's a really solid die now. It's just a little bit susceptible to Draco Sarah, but as Draco Sarah gets knocked out of their arena, it'll become slightly more useful then. Um, mm -hmm. that's that's just about it. <laughs> yeah, just all these new counters but again um you might have to want to do that measurement yourself the amount of things that beats now that it didn't beat before versus the amount of things that beats it now that it didn't beat it before so again it's in that weird situation again so moving on magna magna nothing much changed it except it got a <laughs> hp buff which is i think it's like 250 more than what it had two patches ago which Back then, it was already, like, you know, one of the best dinos in the game uh, before the HP nerf. And now, it got slightly more HP than it, it was at its apex. So, Magna is back, I guess. 3,750 HP, 1.4k damage, 128 speed, 20% crit, DSS, null impact, distracting impact, DSR, immunity. So, um, Magna, I really don't think there really is much to talk about, it, except, you know, it just straight up got better. It straight up got better. Like... Like a, a lot of um, dinos suffer a lot from from indirect nerfs due to how the meta changed. Um, you know, it, obviously Magna is affected by that as well. But I think the effect on Magna really is kind of minimal um, than 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 say you know whatever happened to Dilarac or whatever happened to to say uh, Dio, right? So I I still it, it's it's in a great position. So. Um, nothing too much, uh, change here, it, you know, it want, it, it got a few better matchups, and it's not as susceptible to Draco Sarah as it was before, it still is, you know, that, that's what Draco Sarah's job is, so, um, do you guys want to talk about this? There really isn't too much to talk about, I, I don't think. Yeah, um, I think Magna is, it's definitely better than it was last patch, but despite having more HP than the patch before that, I think it's significantly worse than than in that patch just because uh that 1400 attack it's starting to seem kind of low in the meta to be perfectly honest <laughs> uh, and that's sad but like power creep has really arrived like this little speed demon has only 100 more attack than what i like it than this than the sauropod it's got as, as it's, it's got as much attack as gemini 
except Gemma Tetanus higher term one damage. Um, it's I don't know. It's uh, it loses quite a lot of head to heads. Uh, like I think one of the, like the only ones from that we've covered here that it actually beats I think are Trico, Dio depending on the on the move order, and uh, I think it beats Milo Nemes. And um, yeah, Dalarak. Yeah. Oh, Dalarak's not on this page, though. Unfortunately, <laughs> spoiler alert. <laughs> but like, it does lose quite a lot of head-to-heads. But it is mm -hmm. a, it's just one of those mid-game dinos that is really good for like softening up the opponent's team, waiting for and like letting mm. something else actually take. Um, it's quite good at revenge killing Indo Gen Two. Like, if Indo Gen Two took some damage, it can null impact it. Mm -hmm. But it definitely loses the head-to-head. Um, yeah, it's it, it's it, it's an oddball. Uh, it's got a, a, it's got a super cool kit. If uh, being immune is always great, being able to distract, being able to defend shatters are a super good quality. It's not that it's not frail for an offensive dino, but the I've honestly noticed that the the power, especially on turn one, can be quite lacking. Uh, well, uh, j just a quick word on, on the uh, head to head thing. Um, the th thing about Magna is. You know, it doesn't beat that much S tiers or, you know, S plus tiers, but it kind of obliterates a lot of the, uh, you know, the, the folks in A tiers, A plus, right? So, yeah, yes, that's a very good point. Yeah, that's the, it's kind of like a reason, it, it's kind of like, oh, like, it's not that we want you in S tier, it's just that you, you're, like, you're just so much better than all the A plus tiers, like, we can't put you in yeah. there, right? Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of in that kind of situation. So, um, a, a quick word about Magnum before we move on, Tim? Uh, I think Professor pretty much covered all of it. Professor. <laughs> 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 Poor guy. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. I bet I'm younger than you. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Moving on. Um, uh, Forasora. For Forasora. I think that's how we pronounce it. So, this new bird, uh, 3.9k HP, 1.5k damage, 130 speed. Uh, Superiority strike, consume oh, rampage, rampage, run, sidestep, swap, and stun, immune to swap prevention. Uh, we're actually literally just talking about Forest or right before we started uh, this thing, so. Wow, this thing's a little monster, man. This thing oh, is a so monster. <laughs> it's amazing. Mm -hmm. I use it. Yeah, two rampages with 1.5k base damage, 130 speed. What the heck? <laughs> it, it's it's very similar to uh, um, what's it called? Uh, Professor Rathor. Smilocephalus. Oh, yeah. Except actually good because mm -hmm. it's it's bulkier. It's this thing isn't frail. This thing is quite bulky for an offensive dino. Right. It's it's got a stupidly good speed tier. Um, <laughs> and then like the, the kid, like what the hell <laughs> can. Uh, the, the the six thousand damage in two turns is it's ridiculous. If the if like a Gemini, for example, wouldn't it, it has the potential to kill a Gemini Titan um, if it doesn't shield <laughs> or slow. So it probably won't. But uh, <laughs> it's just it's got the damage output. It's got the the bulk. It's got the speed. It, it reminds me that wise. It reminds me a lot of uh, of Quetzorion, and mm -hmm. moveset wise, it reminds me of of Smiloseth. Like it's it, kind of like a mix between both of them but better than either like mm -hmm. the instant rampage it, the the utility behind this move is insane it goes before instant charge it goes like it, apart from it, it goes before instant distraction the only uh, exception to that being yoshi it goes before instant invincibility so like even if your opponent has like a trico or a deal out in front of and they're wounded they can't pull their they can't pull their game of their stalling game between those two moves. Mm -hmm. Forasora will just uh, snipe it with the instant rampage. Mm, goes and before cloak. Rampage and run. Yeah, and then just get out again with rampage and run and do the whole thing again with the swap and stun, giving a, a possible even free stop, uh, uh, swap in. So it, the the swap and stun combined with the instant rampage is, gives it ridiculous revenge killing potential, and then like it does a huge hit on the way out again as well. It, so so good one of the most underrated dinos i think in this in this patch it's just just because people don't really have the the material to level it up super high yet uh -huh. but as time goes on we'll be seeing more and more of this guy if people decide to invest in it without if they're not afraid of it getting a hybrid 
Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that is also an issue as well. Tim? <laughs> so, this thing is not a head-to-head monster. Don't want anyone thinking of that because it is bad and head-to-head. But it's a good thing it's not. it has the utilities to be everything but a head-to-head monster. Um, the fact it can come into a, a setup door, finish it off if it has instant charge. Um, it can come into an Erlico Spikes, one-shot it. It can come into um, a somewhat hurt Erlodom, kill it before it can even do cloak or anything. Like, it's it's just, this thing is just so strong as a support dino. It, um, the swap in stun, being able to, to swap in on a, a Draco Sarah that might have taken some damage, take that thing out real quick. Um, and then, and then being able to do 3,000 damage on the way out, that synergy combined with Draco Sarah, that's what, 5,400 damage? Mm. Or swapping out into Smilo Nemesis or Mono Stego. Like, it has really good team synergy and has some really good tech. Yeah. Although, I do, I do feel like the sidestep is kind of useless to it because it doesn't use it much. It's, it's like a niche. Kind I mean, of... versus Erlodom, right? Um, since you can't really actually one shot it. If it decides to go for a minimal speed up. And you go for an instant rampage, a rampage, and they could just minimal speed up, then rampage take you out, right? So you can't, yeah, you, I mean, it's like, like it I said, it, yeah, it has these uses, but uh, the vast majority of the time, yeah, it's 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 like with Indoraptor Gen two and evasive stance, like there could be a niche use for it, but the vast majority of the time, you just want to be using your rampages and your R two strike. Yeah. So. Yeah. There you go, for for Sora or whatever you call it. Amazing Dino. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Moving on, um, this Dino surprisingly made a comeback <laughs> in this patch somehow. Triostronics, Triostronics. Oh my goodness, this thing. Four point two k health, one point three k damage. That buff, one twenty four speed, twenty percent crit, armor piercing strike, ready to crush. Defense China Rampage, Frozen Strike, and Immunity. So, um, the the biggest reason this thing actually, um. Got got a huge comeback is you know um, the meta is leaning a bit towards more slower and bulkier dinos although there are a lot of you know really strong class cannons as well like Forosaurus just talked about earlier on right um, but this is this is its job it's to take out slow bulky dinos it's really really good at it it's one of the best revenge killers in the game with the ferocious strike and you should always try to do that. <laughs> Because like having a ferocious boosted fetch iron rampage is, it, it, it's just absolutely incredible with four point two k HP. So not not a lot of things are gonna one shot at turn one. One twenty four speed, uh, also that extra twenty percent crit to do even more damage with that. It's it's just really really good. And also, um, one more thing like oh like uh, it, it's it loves Draco Saris. <laughs> like uh, Draco Saris just absolutely set up bait for it. Like you could. Like the, I, uh, there aren't re- a lot of scenarios where you can use Ready Crush. Maybe like against a Dio or you know Trico, uh, you know if you're you know, predicting a whatever kind of move coming up, maybe you could use Ready Crush. But you know it's not a really often used move. But if you have a Drake Sarah, um, your opponent's using, you could go ahead and Ready to Crush and then Frost to Strike, and then you'll be boosted to the absolute craziness and then the next defense chat and rampage is just going to be bonkers <laughs> so um this is a really fun dino so uh, any thoughts on how trials somehow got into s tier guys tim uh it it's not really surprising to me with um like you said with the metal getting slower it has an easier time of revenge killing now and that is its game it's not that good in head to head although it does have some good matchups in head to head like against yeah, it's, you know, and all. if you compare it to like all the other stuff we've been talking about it's probably one of the worst uh, or, or worse head to head ones honestly yeah and then but with it with it being able to be faster than anything it's not like someone can bring in another dino and after it revenge kills it and it'll be okay no mm-hmm. it's gonna take a boosted defensive shattering rampage it's not gonna be okay. <laughs> um, 
uh, the re- the main reason we I was going over scenarios earlier um, with Triostronics, and when it is set up, it beats what like I think it was like oh what was it eleven of the fifteen S tier and S plus tier dinos, and then it beats majority of the A plus tier dinos. Mm-hmm. Like it's really strong this pack. Yeah, it's quite uh <laughs> quite the. The, the, the comeback here, Prof? I don't really have much to add. Maybe just like this isn't obviously relevant for one of you for like standard level 26 situations, but there are very, very few dinos that are scarier than Triostronix that is a, spear, a tier speed faster than your own dino. Oh, yikes. If this guy gets like the, the, the speed jump over another fast dino, it's like game over. Like, yeah. Oh. It, this is one of those dinos where like a tier 8 uh, uh, triostronix like if, if, like at the top of the leaderboard tier 7 is kind of like the standard but if this guy's tier 8 uh, it's over because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then done. it just has insanely good matchups everywhere but yeah you guys covered pretty much everything alright last one our resident <laughs> S tier epic <laughs> Proser out the mind is still sticking around. Um, obviously, uh, got a decent a direct buff, but also again, you know, same thing with Earldom. The meta kind of screws with it, right? Three point nine k health. Oh my goodness, three point nine k health. One point six k damage. One thirty one speed. Five percent crit. No armor. Null strike. Distracting rampage. Instant strike. Evasive stance. Swap and null immunity. Um, that's your favorite, Tim. Want to talk about it? <laughs> Sure. Uh, this thing, yeah, it, it it got the buff of for the HP, which would have helped if the meta didn't become bulky. Um, right. as we will see in time. I mean, it uh, helps, people... but you know. Oh, absolutely, it helps. You'll see in time once we people start getting those level thirty Gemini's, level thirty Maximus, the Carnotuckets, Gripalits, and all that. It will lose its edge quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, the reason why it made S tier right now is because it is really strong. Um, 3,200 damage with its Rampage. Most of the time, you're going to be revenge killing with this thing. Mm-hmm. It's a scary revenge killer. With the distraction, 3,200. Um, instant distract to be able to stop Rampages and stuff like that. It's got um, Evasive Stance, which is... Just like Endogen 2 and um, Furasora, it, it doesn't really need it. But there are times where you know you're going to win. Like, there are times where I instant distract. They use Defense Shattering Rampage, like on a Thor. Okay, well, I'm going to get hit by Instant Charge anyways. But I'm going to win the next turn. I might as well set up an invasive stance. So there are times where it is useful for it. Um, you can also, if you're if you're smart enough with it, you can set it the rampage up again, being able to instant distract and then take the kill with a null strike. But it it has some matchups. I think it's a 25% chance to beat Erlodon, which isn't that good. Um, a lot of its matchups, it it beats. Does it beat? It craps on A plus tier though. Oh, absolutely. This thing is, as soon as you start getting higher than aviary, it starts to lose its edge a little bit. But every aviary down with the um, the fact that it's so easy to make, it, it just craps on all those dinos. Yeah, there's like 30 posts a day complaining about this thing, so I think <laughs> everyone knows how absolutely. Yeah, that's that's definitely mm-hmm. a really big point. Just that it's like significantly better in the lower arenas than it is in the higher arenas, since the majority mm-hmm. of players in the lower arenas they'll get a, a skewed number of people saying that it's uh, completely busted and broken and stuff. So, mm-hmm. we but we also have to keep in mind, like when we when we talk about uh, the tier list, it, it is meant with like all the, the, the top tier like all, all the dinos at equal level level 26 it's mm-hmm. it's not the I'm arena boosted. experience that we're talking about here um but if you're looking at it, looking at it from that point of view then i can completely understand why uh proserathomimus is giving you a lot of trouble like the only option is to, like level up its counters and 
and then then you'll do better but yeah mm-hmm. it's one of the it's still like despite the fact that the meta is unkind to it mm-hmm. um, it's still one of my least favorite things to see come out late game <laughs> yeah for sure so uh anyways um any last uh words on any of this because that's basically all our list here so uh, um we've, we've mm-hmm. got- some honorable mentions i think well, not honorable mentions i guess we're, we're i guess we're just trying to get this out before the comments get to us yeah. um there, there uh, there's a few dinos um that people will obviously ask in the comments section that you know we're uh either asked here before or birdline asked here and wondering why they're not here so let's throw through a few of these uh out there so uh let's see what what were there? Um, we got the Tenontorex for one, Dilorak, Eutorinex, uh, uh, um, Thordalosaur. Uh, what else? Maybe some people will ask why Indoraptor in, uh, is not here. Um, but I think they Quetzalion. all. Like Quetzalion, yeah, that, that's another big one. right? Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they're all in A plus at the moment. So. Uh, yeah, well, you know what? We'll, we'll, uh, it, this is already going on a bit long. It's like an hour or something. So we'll talk about that in the next episode when we actually talk about the A pluses. But yeah, um, just before everyone asks, oh, you forgot to put X in here, Monast. You forgot to put Monastic. Oh, well, we didn't forget. It's just not in this tier. So, <laughs> anyways, anyways, um, that's gonna be it for uh, this one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Again, also, um, check out uh, Prof's uh, video on this uh, as well. He also did his own breakdown of this. I'll link it in the description again. Um, so yeah, again, uh, like if you enjoyed this. Uh, share, subscribe to your new channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one.